Hello, everyone. I hope you are doing well. I'm supposed to hide my camera so you can ap appreciate this uh, amazing uh, thumbnail uh, that was created. I, I really, I, I really enjoy this thumbnail. Yes, and as, as Tristan says, you you get gravelly Zeta today because I am getting over a cold, so uh, I I hit it home uh, instead of going to work today, and we'll we'll do the same tomorrow and posted videos. But uh, I wanted to watch this all with you, but you you will get more of me blowing my nose and coughing than you usually do. So I I will try and utilize my magical mute mic button. Uh, to do this, uh, and I, I will probably be less vivacious than my usual self, uh, but I am excited uh, to see Simon tackle this. Uh, I, I suppose my my preliminary note uh, is, uh, uh, in addition to the the glorious uh, thumbnail that I am just staring at, uh, is that uh, this puzzle I was quite proud of the break in, and then it took me. I don't know, two and a half weeks to get the actual rest of the puzzle uh, to line up. Like th this puzzle was way more stubborn than typical. And I, I I don't remember any puzzle that uses only quote unquote standard variants uh, that was this stubborn uh, at the end of it. Uh, so like the, like I, I've had, I don't know, looking at it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Like seven of the clues were in almost from the very beginning. Uh, and then uh, and then the remaining ones just took forever, which is, I guess, like the remaining half. All right. So uh, we're going to check the audio and see how the uh, how the audio works. So you can let me know how loud I am versus the loudness of... Uh, the music and Simon and so on. Probably more Simon than the music. Hello and welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where one of our testers has alerted me to the fact that there is a new Zetamath Sudoku called Crosswalk, and that's exactly what I'm going to have oh, a go good. at. Um, I have no idea how difficult it is. Um, Zetamath puzzles are normally, hmm, I would say, on the harder side of average difficulty, but this could be absolutely monstrous, or it could be a harder breeze. side of average. Um, I, I, I'm happy to enough, um, uh, em embrace Logic harder Masters side of average a rating at all. Although there was a, a comment from Pietato, I think, saying that this is an absolutely brilliant puzzle. So I, I'm not surprised by that in the in the least. I don't know how many so times Zeta has appeared lower. on the channel. It's a lot, and every single time. Uh, the puzzles have been very clever and have always made me smile. So I, ex I expect nothing less I'm from the great man today. To, uh, and I will read you the rules of, of this one in a moment or two. You can see that um, apparently Zetamath has been working with Sandra of Sandra and Nala fame to create a slightly different colour scheme, um, which apparently is uber colour. Oh, that, that, that is giving me way too much credit. Mixo used this colour scheme uh, from Sandra that Sandra said was uh, was better for uh, color blindness, and I just liked the idea. So I was just like, well, rather than using the uh, the F puzzles in eight colors, I'll try using Mixos and see if people like it. But I, I to be clear, had absolutely nothing to do with any of this. The blind friendly. So if you do suffer from color blindness, do let us know whether these colors are better than the classic colors we use for sort of green lines and region some lines and but I, I do very much want to know if this is better because i'm aware that colored lines are like the worst in terms of being colorblind friendly or not uh as far as constraints go and i have my proclivities to set puzzles which are a bunch of colored lines so i do think it's a big positive if we sort of push towards colored lines that are actually distinguishable yeah, I think the colors are very pretty as far as like uh, as far as I, I go, uh, although I may have discovered that I may be some sort of colorblind because there's a blue and a purple in there that I can't tell the difference between. Uh, so if you're wondering why the Renbonds are pink, it was because I couldn't actually tell the difference between the uh, the blue and the purple. I guess these are Renban. Yeah, it looks like these are Renban. So, um, yeah, let, let us know what you think of this this palette. Um, now, do I have any news for you today? I've got some birthdays to talk uh, about. Probably, Paul Clay. I don't quite know how that works. We are streaming tomorrow night. 
Islands of Insight. I'm uh, preparing myself mentally for uh, the, the motion sickness that may emerge, but I, I'm really looking forward to trying that game. So uh, love to have your company if you're around. The only other news is over on Patreon, there is a whole stack of extra content at the moment. There's our monthly competition, which is a Sudoku hunt themed around negative constraint puzzles called Evening Attractions. Lots of you are getting stuck into that, unsurprisingly, and the feedback so far has been great. So do check it out. If you haven't had a look at it, you've still got till the 20th of the month to be in with a chance of winning the competition. Um, and then we've got my solve of Emre Kolotoglu's region geometry. That's not for the faint hearted. If you like very hard puzzles or very, very long puzzle videos, that will be for you. And we've also got um, uh, my crossword video talking about uh, Dean Mayer's recent puzzle that appeared in the Sunday Times. And I know that's a bit more specialist, but I, I'm pleased to say that some people have been watching that and really liking it. So agreeing, I think, with the cleverness of, of the clues in that puzzle, which were stellar. Um, right, let's do some birthdays. I'll start with saying a very happy birthday to Dakota. This is from your good friend, Nick, who wrote a, just a glowing email about you, Dakota. Um, telling telling us that you were there for him at a very dark time in his life, even though you hardly knew him at the time. And I think that was about five years ago. Um, he described you as a great friend, a fantastic mum, and an exceptional human being. And although you live across the country from each other now, you're only a text away. And he hopes that you're able to celebrate your birthday today with a good vegan chocolate cake recipe. So many happy returns, Dakota. Uh, it sounds like you are and indeed an exceptional person and um, I hope you have a great birthday. Next we'll turn to Michael. Um, now your older brother Joshua wrote to us Michael to tell us you're turning 41 today and and the two of you I think discovered the channel independently um, but you both enjoy it and Michael you have started setting video or setting Sudokus I should say themed around sort of childhood memories um, which is well, what a lovely thing to do. So Michael, many happy returns. I hope you have chocolate cake, obviously. And then finally, somebody who won't be having chocolate cake, but might be having lemon pound cake, which is probably just about acceptable. Sam, Sam's turned 21 today. And I know this because your sister January wrote to us, Sam, and said that you'd appreciate the shout out. So many happy returns. I hope your lemon pound cake comes with a suitable ratio of icing. Uh, to cake one to one of course at least um and with uh, that said done, we can get on fan. with some solving let's have a look at what crosswalk by zeta math is all about and i will read you the rules we have got I'm hide the normal just in case you rules want to see the rules. digits along a pink renban line form a set of non-repeating consecutive digits in any order so if this if this line had a one on it then we would know that this line had to contain one two three four and five I will say I I do think in terms of these colors, I think the colors are close enough to the standard colors that I think if someone was forced to guess what each of these constraints is, they would probably guess correctly uh, and unless they confuse the whispers with modular line. So al although the colors are quite different, I think they're vivacious enough. Apparently that's the word of the day uh, and uh, and still similar enough that I, I think they're still distinguishable. And those can be in any order we like. So that would be an appropriate, appropriate possible order. Um, digits do not repeat along gold NABNA lines. Additionally, no two digits appearing anywhere on a NABNA line can be consecutive. E.g. if a line contains a two, there cannot be a one or a three anywhere along the line. So we've seen these creatures before. They are quite difficult to get your head round um, unless they're five cells long. And unfortunately, none of these seem to be. So basically, let's imagine, yeah, what, did, what was the example? Oh, if there was look a two how generous on the I was, Simon. I gave now, you a length two one. What, what, what more could you want in your grid than a length two Nabner? Well, because we can't have a consecutive digits anywhere along the line, none of those three digits could be a one or a three. That's how Nabners <clears> work. Um, now, next line type is adjacent digits along a green line must differ in value by at least five. Hey, so these are normally called German whispers lines. 
So imagine this square was a 1, then this square here would have to be at least equal to 6, because it must be at least different by 5 uh, from 1. So it could be 6, 7, 8, or 9. That's how green lines work. And then finally, box borders divide the blue line into segments with the same sum. So what that's telling us, we've only got one blue line, it's telling us those two digits there, the sum of these two digits is the same as the sum of those three digits is the same as the sum of those two digits. So if these I mean, you could up, solve it on stream to 15, tomorrow if you, if, you, uh, 15, if you dip out. I, I would like to see to you solve it, Tristan. And that's all the rules. Do you have a go? The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. The first thing I can see is that there must be a five on that line. Um, because this is a set of consecutive digits. And if you imagine the digits one to nine, laid out before us and we're going to slice five consecutive digits if we started with the one we'd still get to the five but if we started with the nine we'd still get to the five going downwards so there must be a five on here um now the other the other pink lines unfortunately are not long enough to uh to need a particular digit on them thank you carl I'm scared of the Nabna lines. I don't really want to think about those. So perhaps we think about the German whispers. So German, there are a few secrets to know about German whispers lines. So I'll just trot through those quickly. The first, of course, Maverick has taken off. Maverick is getting ever more regular again. Literally, the moment I start recording the last few days, there's been... The, the, the break-in is of, all about the box um, one now, Nerfie Web. That is my, my way of thinking uh, about it. Buzzing past my window. Anyway, the um, you can't put a five on a whispers line, and that's because if we try and put five on it, the next digit is impossible because it needs to be at least five different from five. And if we go upwards, we run into digits that aren't Sudoku digits like 10 and higher. And if we go downwards, we get to zero or lower. So that won't work. And that means that each digit that we do put along a German whispers line has a property of either being below five or above five. And the interesting thing is that if it's below five, the next digit can't also be below five because these two digits could not be five apart. Yeah, I, I know MicroStudy did this break in with could. like 18 in other words, different the colors. the lines oscillate like this. Which is not now how I had intended, but I can know. see it that way. We don't know whether we're starting with a high or a low digit here. But, but we do know that those two digits will have the same polarity. So they will both be either high or... Oh, hang on. I have to think about my color choices a bit here. Uh, maybe I'll go orange. Mm. Although that, that, that has an implied lowness about... No, an implied highness normally. For hot digits are normally high, aren't they? Oh. Um, Grey. <laughs> Grey. That's unambiguously... Um, Unambiguously ambiguous. Sort of not saying anything. So we'll have grey and maybe <clears throat> red. So we know that the red ones are either both low or both high, and the grey ones are both, light, are both low or both high. The same is going to be true here. But the problem here is that we can't, although we could shade this line, these two have to have the same polarity, so they're either both going to be high or both going to be low. We can't really relate it to, to the shading there. I mean, obviously, these are going... What well, If these were low, we'd have used up three low digits in the row. If they're high, we'd have used up three high digits, because we know this is one of each. It's something to do with box nine is probably the most cluttered, isn't it? The thing is, I just find Nabna lines so unintuitive. I mean, it is true to say, I think, from the instructions <coughs> that, uh, let me just get the instructions again. We can't repeat a digit along a Nabna line, can we? I will say I was slightly afraid that this break-in would be a little difficult to spot, although I see that Josh has at least spotted the right thing to look at, uh, because, of course, you know, the, the break-in I think is quite easy to spot if I only put the clues in the grid that are re related to the break-in, but of course the grid has lots of clues in it that are not uh, related to the break-in. Oh, thank you. 
uh, I am still here, I swear. Uh, so, uh, so, so I'm not surprised that this, this break-in takes a little bit longer to spot exactly what's happening. No, digits cannot repeat. So this digit, uh, but it could go there. Uh, this digit can't go on its own line. So that digit is in one of four places. Hmm. Um, I don't know what to do with that. I, I also, unfortunately, doubt that it's anything to do with the, the blue line. Normally, when the only secret, such as it is, and it's not even a secret, it's just a comment, a brief aside that I'll make about a blue line, is that what we're typically trying to do is to find huge mismatches in the number of cells within boxes. So here, the problem is that we've got a three cell sequence here, but it's Thank you, honey. we've got two cell sequences in the other two positions. We can refill that. So, I mean... In extreme worlds, this this could be an eight nine pair, and these could add up to seventeen. I mean, I suppose these have to be at least six. If these were a one two three triple, it's true to say each of these dominoes adds up to at least six. But that means there's a, a lot of freedom. We've got six as the minimum for these dominoes, seventeen as the maximum. Um. Right, so it can't be these. These are all disambiguating lines. I'm going to allege right now. So um, maybe this box is where we're meant to look. Four lines being relegated at least, at least to this, disambiguation this box has so got early. No Nabna lines in it. That's fantastic. Um, so, right, so five is definitely not on the whispers line. So five is on one of these ren bands, which means one of these ren bands is not what I'll call an extreme ren. So I, I'll say the question I intended uh, for solvers to ask. I'm curious because a lot of people in chat have solved it. I'm curious how many people uh, in chat phrased this question uh, this way themselves. The question I intended people to ask was, how many digits does this length five Renbon in row one have in common with this length four Renbon in column three? Uh, and if you ask that question, uh, the answer has to be exactly one digit in common. Uh, and so uh, we, we'll see if Simon gets here. I, I think Simon's going to sort of get there a little bit at a time because I think Simon's about to realize there's a five corner marked here and then figure out that that means there's fives over there and then I'm not not quite sure exactly where that's going to lead him. Uh but the point I had in mind and this this is sort of, you know, the before I drew a clue in the grid, I knew I was going to draw these three clues in the grid basically. Uh uh is that if these two Renbon have two digits in common, those two digits are consecutive and they both go on the Nabner and that breaks horribly. Uh, so, and if these two Renbon have no digits in common, then this cell sees uh, sees all of the digits for one through nine, and that's a problem. So then you have to decide: okay, they share exactly one thing in common, and then sort of things fall out. That that's how I that's how I thought about it. In other words, it couldn't get to one or nine. Whichever one of these has got five on it, it could go it could go five four three two, or it could go five six seven eight but it's never going to pick up an extreme digit. So the extreme digit or digits are either going to be on the well, The problem is ex putting extreme digits on German whispers lines is a, is a fool's errand really, because it doesn't restrict it. The most restricted digits are actually not extreme digits in, um, in the sense of whispers. So if we think of middly digits like four and six, Four and six could actually only go on this whisper sequence in these two positions because four and six only have one partner. Yeah, and th there is another completely different way to think about it, which is that if you think about the digits of this Renbon alone, the, the row one one, if you think of them as being A, B, C, D, E, and you would just ask where these five digits go in box one, you actually know it has to be B and D, the sort of every other one have to go here as a pair 
uh, just because there's no other way to keep them all apart from messing with this Nabner. So that's another sort of way that you can sort of think about that and then think about what that means about this Renbon down here. I, I sort of liked that that was, that was an alternative path that someone might take. If they that's didn't five ask away my question. From, the, from a Sudoku perspective, so four would have to go with nine. Six would uh, have I'm to just go with slamming one. lots of tea, Lakia. I, I'm certainly quieter today than usual. And as Tristan said, uh, gravelier. I don't see this yet? I have to say. Yeah. So putting ones and nines on here is not not interesting, is what I'm saying. One one can go with six, seven, eight, or nine. No. Um... Golly, I suspect this means I do have to think about the Nabner lines. Let me see. I if might that be had the five on it. If that, if this line had the five on it, that's not not in, in these cells in box seven, that would put a five on this this horseshoe Nabner line, and that would mean it couldn't have four or six on it which is ah ah okay there you go there is a link to the puzzle there's something right there's something going on uh yeah there's definitely something going on between this line and this line um Well, there, I haven't quite thought this through, actually, but there are two things I'm noticing. The first is that there must be some commonality of digits between these two uh, these two lines. Yeah, I think Simon so has now, now those lines read my mind. <clears throat> now, there are nine cells altogether on these lines. So if there was no commonality, if this was one, two, three, four, five, and this was six, seven, eight, nine, that digit's impossible to, to put into the Sudoku because it couldn't be anything. It would be seen by all the different digits. But that means that there is an overlap between these lines. And we were just thinking of that, about that in the context of five. So if there is a five on both lines, there is a five on here. But they can't... They, yeah, this is the bit I haven't quite... For, I haven't quite formulated in my mind. I want to say that they can't overlap in two positions. But yeah, because wouldn't that automatically put a consecutive pair on the Nabna? I feel that they, I feel like it would. Like if this was one, two, three, four, five, and this overlapped by two digits, surely that would mean this was four, five, six, seven, and four and five would be locked out of these squares, and four and five would be forced onto the Nabna, which won't work. Right. So that means that there, okay, it means that there is exactly one overlap. Between these two sequences. Okay, well, si Simon got to exactly the uh, the observation now, that I wanted to make. What does that mean? So that makes me happy. I'm, I, so there are I'm nine, always happy there when are someone says the same thing that I was thinking about. <clears throat> Which means there must be eight, because there's only one overlap, there must be eight different digits and one shared digit in these nine cells. Yeah, so there are eight different digits, one of which is repeated on the other Renban. So let's imagine if this was one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Ah, <laughs> okay, well, that's not one, two, three, four. Oh, that's it. Right, done it. Okay, right. So this is very clever. It's very clever, but not easy to... How long does that take me? 15 minutes. Good grief. Um, okay, so what I've just noticed is this sequence. I probably should have thought about this earlier, but these cannot be 
or either all very low or all very high. And that's because of what it's going to do for my, my whispers line. Imagine this was one, two, three, four. And let's think about the nature of these digits. Now we know there are two highs and two lows. We don't know the order, but there must be two, two digits on this whisper line that are lower than five. And therefore selected from one, two, three, and four. Let's imagine it's those. So microstudy and someone else actually pointed out to me that I, I could have made these Nabner's Z's, uh, which I, I, I wanted to briefly address. Because uh, I, I usually, whenever I can make a clue a Z, I do. Because, you know, Zeta math, it's my signature. What, what are you going to do? Uh, in this puzzle, one of the things I deliberately did was to actually make everything I could be at a right angle. In fact, the only thing that's not at a right angle is this to sort of visually suggest that you're looking for these right angle intersections uh, at the at the opening. So that was sort of an attempt to visually uh, signal this. Uh, I, I also knew the title was going to have cross in it because of that. Uh, I, I wasn't exactly sure cross what. Uh, I, I wasn't quite sure. Uh, it ended up being crosswalk because I was able to make these disambiguating clues look like a crosswalk in addition to that cross. But anyway, that, that was one thing I did to sort of hopefully get people to look at this sort of complicated thing uh, that you happens can see, here. I've now got five digits in box seven selected from just four <laughs> different numbers. So that won't work. Uh, and the same is obviously true if we made this six, seven, eight or nine. So if we know that it's impossible to put one or nine on a four cell uh, pink line, what digit must be on the pink line? Five. And sorry, that's bit, I should have thought about that when we were thinking about this. But now we can see that the common digit, the one overlapping digit that exists between these two REM bands is five, which means five is on this line which means four and six are not on this line. And that's, okay, that's slightly strange. <laughs> which strikes me as um, probably the way I was described at parties at university. <laughs> that guy, Simon, he's slightly strange. Um, anyway, slightly strange Simon. What I'm thinking about there is that digit. Oh, yeah, okay. There's two, there's, right, there's two things I've thought about here then. So that digit is, I think it's a one or a nine is where my brain is going. Because these sequences overlap on five, don't they? So this one is either two, three, four, five, or five, six, seven, eight. Well, let's imagine this was five, six, seven, eight for a moment. If this is five, six, seven, eight, this one, which is can only overlap with the five, so it cannot have six, seven, or eight on it, is one, two, three, four, and five. And if this, on the other hand, is two, three, four, five, then this, which can't have four on it now, because that's going to put a four on here with, along with the five, is going to be five, six, seven, eight, nine. So what we're actually learning is that this is an extreme rim band. I, this has one or... I don't know of anyone, Lakia, who did this puzzle without, in some way or another, thinking about the interaction between these two Renbon and this Nabner line. Uh, there are a lot of different ways of thinking about it, which I, I knew was going to be the case. I would be surprised if it is possible to solve this puzzle by thinking about anything else, because I think it's the only thing that is constrained. Uh, and if you don't observe that, I don't think you can get, I, I think you probably can't get anywhere, but I'm not sure. It, it's always interesting to me if pe people can sort of figure it out. But in, in this instance, uh, I think, although there's lots of different ways to articulate the break-in, I think you pretty much have to find it. Hey, it's Avocado. Or nine on it. This is a quite extreme REM band going in the other direction. So if this was five, six, seven, eight, nine, this would be uh, five, four, three, two, and vice versa. I, if that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh, I can't remember. If, is that what I said before? If that's one, two, three, four, five, this would be five, six, seven, eight. 
So this digit is the gap. It's the missing digit from, from 1 to 9 in the sequence. So this is the... Yeah, I, I think of this thing Simon is articulating is that the union of these two is a length 8 Renbon. Extreme digit that it's not possible to put on, really, on this line. This line just misses meeting the other extreme digit. But what got me thinking about this square, actually, was the fact that I couldn't put four and six on this horseshoe because I can't, I can't put four. Simon is four very good at explaining things here, clearly. Can I? I, I am... Because then this Ren band couldn't have consecutive digits on it because it's got five on it. I mean, the, the only reason I do Sudoku at all is because Simon is good at explaining things clearly. Uh, it must be said. It needs a four or a six on it. But the same is true here. This has got five on it, so it needs four or six on it. So and it, it also should be said that the entire time I'm making a puzzle, I, I have a sort of like running Simon commentary in my head thinking about how Simon would explain this step. And if I, if I don't like the thing Simon is saying in my head, then I delete the step and go back and do it a different way. Uh, so uh, so I, I very much sort of like channel Simon's monologuing about solving puzzles, both when I, I'm setting, but also sort of how I got into it. So I agree wholeheartedly. There's like um, a weird thing. Also, to, to those of you who are showing up, I, I am slightly sick. So if I sound different or uh, seem less energetic, that is why I, I am definitely going to survive. But uh, I, I have a cold, but I wanted to watch this. Going on. Which, and by weird thingy, I mean, there's a four or a six in this domino, and there's a four or a six in this domino. So the, the four and the six are sort of shared between those two dominoes in box one. That's almost interesting for the Ren ban, you know. Because imagine there was a four here. Well, then we know that this line is going five, six, seven, eight. Which means these two squares can, it means it doesn't matter whether it's four or six here. These two squares can never include four, five or six. I mean, it's not. Yeah, the, the way I would think of what he's saying is because this digit together with this Renbon, that's all the highs or all the lows. So in this whole like gray red universe, these four cells are all the same color. They're all gray or they're all red. Uh, and so you could do coloring and you can actually also do that coloring in row one and say actually these three, or sorry, these four cells, they're all gray or they're all red. So you can sort of do that sort of mass coloring. Very interesting, but it's just something I noticed. So, so don't we still have to be a bit careful with this Ren band, though? Let me just think about that. If well, ah, I didn't mean to do that, I want Great to Manu. to put two, three, hey, four. Hey, Sarah, and how five are you doing? Here. If this is two, three, four, and five, and I need I'm two doing pretty low meds are great, you know, meds are really green great. Line, I'm still like muting myself to go blow my nose and yeah. cough off camera. So, okay, okay. So, but I, so the I'm five alive. on this line, it's not going to matter if we switch the polarity round. If we do that, imagine this was the five. That won't work because these squares will now be selected from six, seven, and eight, and there are not two high digits that are higher than five available to go on the uh, on this whispers line. So it couldn't, it cannot work like that. So instead, what are we learning then? We're learning that this is not five. There is a five in one of these. Hey, our tree. Which is, is that interesting? I don't know. This is two, three, four, five, or five, six, seven, eight. Let me just think about that again. So if this is five, six, seven, eight, the, all of the high digits in the world are going to be consumed in that sort of septomino. Um, because this line has got, has got to have two of six, seven, eight, nine on it. And this has got to have two of six, seven, eight on it. 
So this Ren band has to have, these squares would have to be from low polarity. So either these are both low or these are both high. Coming from doing complex integration. Well, this this might be easier um, than doing complex integration. I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, hang on, let's get rid of this. So we know there's a 5 down here. We know that these squares are either low from 1, 2, 3, 4, or high from 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, I, th I think the real problem is that he started coloring the know, whisper, which is the like squares. the last part I think oh, to gosh, think about oh. in the puzzle. <laughs> right, say to math as usual, making me feel like a plonker. Oh, Rodney, you plonker. Um, okay, look at these two digits here. I'm so, oh, this is so annoying. Okay, these digits include a high and a low digit because they are of different colors on the whisper line. Uh, on this Renbon, Sarah, he knows there's a five on this Renbon because if there's not a five on this Renbon, then these are all the same color and the whisper breaks because that puts five digits of the same color in here. Uh, if there's no five on this Renbon, then these two cells see every digit of whatever color this is, and so that breaks those. But uh, si Simon has been upset by not seeing it this time. We'll see if he sees the same step in about 30 minutes when it's over here, because uh, the exact same step happens later. Now, how then... Could this Renban, which see these two squares, see the whole of this Renban? How could this Renban be extreme? And by extreme, I mean how could it be one, two, three, four, or six, seven, eight, nine? It cannot be those things, because if it was, imagine. Well, let's imagine this was six, seven, eight, nine. Which high? One of these is a high digit. Which high digit shall we make it? And the answer is it cannot be anything, because obviously these tips see the whole of this Renban. So what that means is that this Renban has a 5 on it. And if it has a 5 on it, that 5 is in that domino, because it's not yeah, there, Peter, because I, we've worked out. I have a cold, um, so my voice is gravelier than usual. Three. So now there's a 5 up there. And I am using it and less. Two cells now. Oh, this is on the Ren... Oh, sorry, a Nabna thingy, though. So that's perhaps less important. Uh, oh, goodness me. Okay. Hmm. Oh, yeah, he, he did the break-in, but then did not okay, well, do the coloring. Okay, well, that's not actually done anything at all. I thought that was quite a good deduction. Uh, I was annoyed I didn't see it more quickly, but... Okay. Uh... Um, hmm. Let me think about this. So that what's the name? That digit completes. A, so either, yeah, so whatever, if this was a one, these squares would be two, three, four, and five, wouldn't they? Yeah, because if this is a one, this is the other extreme. This would be nine, eight, seven, six, five. So these would be two, three, four, five. If this is nine, these are one, two, three, four, five. And this is five, six, seven, eight. So whatever that's so whatever these these are, they're putting pressure one way or the other on this domino. What I mean by that is if this is nine, these are selected from one, two, three, and four. Although not ah uh, that right, in fact that does it. That's wrong. Okay. That is wrong. Okay, so. Yeah, this is very clever. This is very clever stuff. It really, it's not, I don't think this is very easy actually, but it's, it's very clever stuff. So what I'm, what I'm noticing here is that I can view these digits as and a set of extreme digits within the within the one to nine um, range. They're either one, two, three, four, five, or 
they're 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now, if they are 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, what do we know about this? We, 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 we said we had to sort of share out the 4 and the 6, didn't we, between these dominoes. So if these are 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, these squares have to include a 4, and the 6 will be up there. So let's look at that. Can that be can that be correct? No. I think this digits, is how most ah, people who I've talked to have seen this step. This is not how not I thought of this enough. step. Even if I make these a two, three pair, these cannot add up to only five. There are three different digits here. We so l let me say how I saw this step, which is to note, if this is a nine, then these are a one, two, three, four quadruple. Not just these two cells, uh, but all of these are a one, two, three, four quadruple. Uh, and that's a problem uh, because it forces all three of these to be low because the biggest this could possibly sum to is seven, and seven in three would be from one, two, three, four. But the reason why I saw that as a problem is because now this cell, which has to be from one, two, three, four, of necessity sees a one, two, three, four quadruple because these two digits can't be both be repeated there or the region sum line isn't right. So the problem with these being low is it leaves this cell with no value is how I thought of it, uh, which is I think one step easier uh, than thinking about how it bounces through the Nabner over here. I mean, certainly the thinking about th how it bounces through the Nabner over here is a, uh, is a, a reasonable way to see it. It's it's not wrong, but it was not something that I thought about, and it wasn't sort of like if that that step would feel a little more look aheady than I like in terms of thinking about it. But I I think it's reasonable. I've seen a lot of people do it that we way. We know they add up to at least six, so we can't do that. That will not work, and that's great because what that's going to do is tell us what this digit is. That has to be one, which means these squares are two, three, four. Ah! Oh dear, I'm getting all my, all my, um, we know that one's not the five. The five lives down here. Um, now these squares are from six, seven, eight, nine, which means there's a four up here using our Nabner logic. We know this is the other extreme set of digits. So this is now five, six, seven, eight, nine. This square is two or three. These squares are two, three, or four. And presumably, <laughs> he says, trying to work out what that means. Um, now we're going to, for our next trick, we are going to say that. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with the way he did it. I think it's perfectly fine, especially since he was sort of focused on the fours and sixes. Because Simon was focused on the fours and sixes rather than focused on the coloring. And so if he was focused on the fours and sixes rather than the coloring, it makes sense that this is how he would sort of end up with this. Although I'm curious if he's going to have focused on the fours and sixes and now forget that there's a six here. I don't know. <laughs> oh, dear, dear, dear. Um, I know one of these is a six, don't I? So these don't include six. So these are very high indeed. So these have to be very high indeed. Ah, that's, that's done it. Right. So now look at these two. These are at least adding up to 15. So these are selected from six, seven, eight, and nine, because if we put five in here, the other digit would be 10. And look at that now. We've got a quintuple on five, six, seven, eight, nine in box three the five of which is in the top row. So these squares don't include five. These squares are one, two, three, and four. Two of them are on a Nabner. Don't know what that means. Um, oh, there's a, uh, have I broken the puzzle? Uh, no, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Oh, I see. Oh, I didn't realize this. Right. Because this has become a one now, I actually know that this Nabner line has to have two high digits on it. 
um, you can see it, it's only got really what room for one low digit because two of the well three of the low digits are used in those three squares aren't they so we can only put one of two two actually it's, it's not four even there's one of two and three on this nabna there's a five on the nabna there's no six on the nabna so there's two digits from seven eight and nine so they must be in order to not be consecutive they must be seven and nine so this has got seven and nine on it which means this yep. is not seven and nine this is six and eight which means these squares haven't got eight on it which means these squares add up to 16 now there's only one way of making 16 in a domino and that is with the number seven and nine so these are both seven nine pairs there's no seven and nine in this triple there is a seven and nine here now this is just i mean it's like one of those dominoes domino runs you know where you click the domino and it just sets off a chain of things that that, that happen all over the place and that's what that's what this feels like in fact it even looks like it these look like dominoes that are being toppled um now probably we can work these out now because they can't include any big well they can include eight what if there's no eight on this line it would be four five six which is 15 15 is not the same as 16 a knowledge bomb there from cracking the cryptic so this right that's great that's that my no it's my second digit so there's an eight there on this line in order to allow it to add up to enough so that's eight that's six there's a six in one of these three squares these the other two digits here add up to eight don't they without using six or seven so these are three five eight look so i was very happy no with this reward falling this out nabna. of uh right so this nabna out of this now these two digits can't be a one two pair because then they'll, that just breaks the rules of nabna nabna logic so there is a four on here which means there's no four up here This digit is a Sudokuable digit. I mean, it's outrageous being made to do Sudoku just 35 minutes into the Sudoku Zeta Math. What are you thinking? I'm glad, um, Mekdi. I'm, I'm very now, glad to hear digits, that. We can pencil mark. They are one, four. I was going to say one, four, seven. No, they're not, are they? They're one, four, and six. Yes, do not so pencil now, those one, four, seven. It will not end well. Uh, now that's fine <laughs> now that's fine look we've got one and four on here so there's no five on here these digits are from six seven eight and nine they're both they're all big and this step i think maybe verbatim very close to verbatim at least was in my Perdoku, but very few people did the Perdoku because it was a Perdoku, the one I did with Ransk. So I was glad I got to repeat this almost the the almost exact setup of what happens with these two cells. Uh, like like it, it is almost verbatim the same. Oh, probably we can do. So let's 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 pencil mark this Nabna then. So it's got two on it. It's got five on it. It's got seven on it. It's got nine on it. So these are not five. These are not two. Right, so there's definitely a five in this domino, and there's definitely a two in this domino by Sudoku. At least I feel slightly more confident that we'll be able to finish the puzzle now, because we seem to have managed to break into it. Ah, there's a five in here, look. So these don't include, well, that. Oh, where's the five? The five is only there. I haven't realised that. Uh, that's probably not doing very much. Um, we've got an awful lot of high digits in row four now. There's got to be a high digit on this two cell whisper line. Um, hmm, not seeing it actually. Sorry, right, let's, let's take stock. What do we now know? Uh, we've got a lot of pencil marks in the grid. 
<laughs> Manu saying, from this point, it still took quite a while to solve. Well, good news. From this point, it still took quite a while to set. Because th this is now approximately what I had set on day one of setting this puzzle. The, the amount that he has done and the rest of these clues to resolve it. Uh, that is what took me forever and ever and ever to sort of figure out how to do correctly. And correctly, in a way that I found satisfying. I, I will say it really hurt my soul that there's only one region sum line. I, I tried a whole bunch of different versions of putting region sum lines that sort of wrapped around here or zigzagged through this or whatever, but n none of them led to satisfying steps that sort of felt like they were in the spirit of the rest of the puzzle. So eventually there ended up being a lone region sum line. Uh, I don't know where to look. It's bizarre, isn't it? Or may, well, maybe it's just me, but I... I'm looking at this, and I have not got a Scooby-Doo. I don't really have a good feeling. Can I do something with these digits now? Oh yeah, I suppose I know. I know there's a one on this um, on the, on this whisper line now, don't I? I feel because like grey-red coloring this whisper it. added and thirty minutes to Simon solve. Is literally, you can't disambiguate the high and low on this whisper until you use, I think, this Napner line. Like, it is literally, like, at the very, very end. Until the very, very end, it is ambiguous which of these is high and which of them is low. Uh, and I, I think he's just not seeing stuff like that he knows both of these are high because of the coloring of the whisper. Two of the low digits are consumed by the bottom of this, this Renban. So one of them is a one. And the other is whatever the oh, the other is that digit actually, so that digit appears on this whisper line somewhere. Uh, I'm going to notate that somehow. I'll put yellow there. Uh, oh no! Actually, oh, no. maybe I'll get rid of my my highlighting. There we I'll go. I'll do this, well, and then I'll make some. that yellow, like that, because that digit has to go down there. So yeah, okay. So we know these are high now, don't we? Yeah, because um, there are two low digits here, which are one and this digit, and then all the other low digits live here. So these are from six, seven, eight, and nine, but they can't be. Nine. Sarah notes you can't put a seven here because it would break that. That step together with the step Simon is doing now, those two steps together are the next step because that, so Sarah's observation is gonna put a corner marked six here. Simon's observation is gonna put a corner marked six here. And those two observations together are going to unlock that this is a length four Renban with no six on it. Nine, because it's a four cell Renban that does have a five on it. So these are from six, seven, and eight. Well then, Oh, no, is that true? No, what I was about to say is nonsense. So I will not <laughs> I will not utter what my brain was thinking. Um, so if these are six, seven, and eight, do I know what these can't include? Sevens. I knew they couldn't include nines. I definitely if... intended high-low coloring, Lakia. I just think it would have been a lot more helpful if he'd high-low colored the stuff involving the Renbon in row one and column three. Uh, so that that was uh, that that. Uh, so I think him coloring here caused him not to color the things that I think then make stuff cleaner. Uh, I like the remaining steps for what it's worth, Gary. And that took me a, a long, uh, it took me a long time to like the rest of the steps. That's basically why the puzzle took forever. Uh, I also had to like redraw this stuff down here a schedillion times. Uh, I was really attached for a long time to the fact that there was like a 189 triple here that was going to let me put a 27 on a whisper, but it sort of had to let that go. I, I will say one uh, piece of advice to setters that I, I used a lot here is to, if you, you are fortunate enough to have a solver uh, that works with your puzzle. So for example, for this puzzle, everything here happens to be supported in ranks solver. Uh, 
then uh, one thing you should do with a solver is to note if anything is logically forced that you don't intend or can't figure out why. And if there is, just back up and do something else. And so uh, in this puzzle, uh, it basically turns out absolutely nothing is logically forced uh, except the things that I intended to be logically forced. Uh, however, in the version that I spent the longest time I just sort of dealt with the fact that this digit was forced to be a three and I could never for the life of me prove why. Uh, and that just kept being just a giant pain because then I kept breaking things because there was some piece of logic that I just did not ever understand. Uh, and so uh, I, I should have just way quicker abandoned it and been like, no, I'm going to redraw these clues so that that's not forced. So anyway, that that is my piece of advice is to, uh, as if you're going to use a solver when you're setting, you should try and sort of maintain maximum ambiguity of things you aren't trying to resolve. So if you're trying to resolve something, of course you want to resolve it. But uh, if you're adding clues to resolve something else, you don't want them to incidentally resolve stuff if you don't understand why, because then that sort of creates this problem where the puzzle is in a different state than your understanding of the puzzle, and that makes it harder to clean up. Oh, I tried to hit play. Uh-oh. Why is Simon not playing? Uh-oh. There we go. There we go. Okay. Is this in some way? Is this in some way obvious? Uh, I don't. I really don't know, actually. If I know there's a high digit in this domino, there's a high digit here. That's two high digits, three high digits. But if this was eight, I get a six say, corner mark in box six. That one of these is a six. If this was eight, uh, there would be seven on the Ren band. And that would have to go here. So this would be eight and seven. The two high digits down there would be six and nine. Six would have to go next to the one. So six would be in one of these two. This thing he's about to discover is so weird, but I was so happy with it. Oh, hang on. There's something. There's a problem there. Right, this right. This, this, is, this interaction is super clever. cute, it's but clever. I... Uh, it's much clever and much simpler than I'm making it. If this is a 7-8 pair, the world breaks. Um, and that is because... Where do I put 6 on the Ren Ban? I, I, so I've got to be... The thing, the thing we've got to be very careful about here is putting 6 into either of these squares in box 7. And that's because of six's monogamous nature. If this is six, these both have to be ones now because that's the only valid digit that will work. So instead, instead of that, yeah. So right. So the way to think about this is where is the six? There must be a six on this ren band, mustn't there? Because it's got. A digit that's one of these digits is at least six. Yeah, the, this whisper originally, I don't remember exactly how this whisper originally was, but it did not have this orientation. And so I, I had to change the C-shaped whisper, which direction it pointed uh, to make this work. But I was really happy when I sort of figured out, ah, yes, I can do that. Hey, Driller. <laughs> Therefore, it's definitely got a six well. on it um, because it has a five on it. Now, if the six was here, we've just said that's going to put a six by Sudoku down here because it can't repeat on its line. And that's going to break this whisper line. So the six is in one of those positions. I'm sure there was a better way of seeing that, but but that is true. Okay, and that, that well, that gives us another digit because now I can't put eight here. Because if I put, if this is a six, eight pair, I must have a seven on the rem band and that's going to break this seven, nine here can't put seven in either of these squares so in fact in fact that is a six seven pair that is these an intended step either earlier. five and eight or five and four depending on how well depending on things that zeta math has figured out that i haven't yet okay but if these are six and seven whether this is four five six seven or five six seven eight is not is another thing that is just like 
completely not resolved until you get to the crosswalk at the very end where there's just like this string of disambiguating clues. Uh, so th this is something which sort of like looks to me like it should be resolved, uh, but somehow inexplicably is not, much like the orientation of the whisper below it. The high digits on this whisper are now eight and nine. Uh, eight and nine are very annoying digits in the sense they put hardly any pressure on the low digits. If we knew there was a six or seven on here, that would be really very cool. Yeah, that's how cool I am. <laughs> um, so, hang on. Hang on now. So, if, what about if that's high? Isn't that going to give me a problem? One, two, three, four. No, because this could be four, five. Ah, no, that didn't, that didn't work. I thought that would break immediately, but it doesn't. I don't think. Wow. Okay. Uh, Patrick asks if I've ever deliberately put or not put a three in a corner. I have never deliberately put or not put a three in a corner. Uh, I, I will admit. Uh, people ask that all the time, and it's not like I'm above thinking about it, but I, I have never had myself think about it while I was setting. Uh, I'm going to take a real quick break. I'll be back in just a second. in or it will not work there we go okay i think we are ready to return hey. to the assignment so my brain is telling me it's going to be something to do with this renban yep correct well th th i think there are things we can say about this renban actually I don't think I can put nine on this, can I? If this has got nine on it, these squares are from six, seven, eight, and nine, and there's too many of those in this row now. So, oh, ah, whoopsie, I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, so there's pencil no, mark there's six and box no six will be very helpful. I might be able to say the same for eight. If there's eight on this Renban, we've worked out it can't be, it can't have nine on it. So it would be eight, seven, whoopsie, eight, seven, six, five. And that also doesn't work because again we've got the same problem so so there is no nine and there's no eight so these are four digits that are selected from the digits one two three four five six and seven so there is now a four on this renban but yeah, seven also doesn't work do we know more than that? I, I think the concise way to say the thing he's trying to do is this Renban does not have both a six and a seven on it because there's only one spot on it that can be six or seven. Not sure. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure. We know, right, 
in this row, we know that the 8 and the 9 are not on this Ren band. So the 8 and the 9 are in these squares. So this Nabna, or the start of this Nabna, doesn't have 8 or 9 on it. Yeah, Gary, and I was glad I got to repeat that deduction. It was quite deliberate that this got repeated. Oh. Oh, goodness. It's going to be this. It's going to be what we did over <laughs> here again. <laughs> it's the same thing, isn't it? Oh, bobbins. Right. Um, it's exactly the same thing. I just didn't see it this way round. Um, these digits on this whisper have to have two high digits in them and two low digits. So this can't be one, two, three, and four again. It's the same point. If this was one, two, three, and four, it's only possible now to pick whichever digit is not used, which will be this one on this on this whisper line. But I've got to have two low digits here. Oh, he did the point so differently. So this is not a low whisper. I, I was thinking about it as the L one, two, three, looking four, at these so two. It definitely, that, that because it has a four on it, it now has a five on it as well. <clears throat> Now, okay, so it doesn't have one on it anymore. So one in, so it one in row seven is now in one of those squares, I think. Phone's buzzing at well, me. Well, oh, yep. Hang on, let me just read that, this. That's a really clever way to, uh, uh, oh, okay. to, to get there. I, I did not think of that, um, but yeah, that, that definitely works. It's actually done nothing, has it? So these squares are from 2, 3, 4, and 5, but does that mean I know this digit? Ah, uh, <laughs> might do. Hang on. Um, well, it does, a, it does a little bit, doesn't it? Because we've got the same trick going on. I can't make these these three digits here. If these didn't include five, they would be two, three, and four, and I couldn't put two low digits on this on this whisper line. So there is a five here, which means that is not five, which means this is not five. So this is a moderate digit. Th that is the five intended thing earlier. Th that is that is what I intended. Column three. Um, now. So that, in theory, might be able to be six. If this was three, four, five, I would put one and two on this line. No, that's wrong. Okay, that's good. That's about the first time I think I've seen anything quickly in this puzzle. That is not six. Because if this was six, these two squares would be from seven, eight, nine, and they're on a nabna. So they would be seven and nine, and that would break that square. Bingo. Right. So this digit now has to be, it has to be from the two, three, four, five family. It's, we know it's not five. So it's now two, three, or four. And this digit has to find a home on this German whispers line. That must be right. So we, because effectively what we've now worked out is there's two low digits in these squares, which can't go on this list. Congratulations other to two Simon digits, for seeing that two days faster this than one, I did. Because these two cannot include this because the Renban doesn't include a repeated digit. So that digit goes in one of those two squares. And that's quite interesting because that gets me that digit, I think. And the reason I think it gets me this digit is that there is another low digit that I have to put on this whispers line, and that is the digit one. Where's that going? Well, it can't go next to another low digit without breaking German whispers rules. So if this that is was a funny way to low, see this. If this was this uh, digit. It's it not quite here. how I would have if explained it, but it, digit, it works it well. Here. So there is a one in one of those squares, which means that digit is a four. That digit is a one. This is no longer a four. So I would have just said this domino along the German whisper sees the entire Renbon. And therefore, this domino, the only low digit available to it is one. Uh, he did that in sort of a roundabout way uh, that also works perfectly well. So now 
Right, so now there is definitely a 4 in this row, which means this is not 4. This is brilliant. It's quite brilliant. Um, this is 2 or 3, so if... Hmm, do we care? Well, we might do a bit. 3 would be better. It can only go next to 8 or 9. And 3 would be ideal if it went here. Which, actually, that doesn't work. Uh, but it could still be two. The reason three doesn't work there is this would be an eight, nine pair. And that would plonk eight and nine on this whisper right into the bottom row where they'd be next to each other. And they wouldn't be five different, would they? So if this if this is low, it's got to be a two. And it's got to... Yeah, it, it took me many days to see that this two, three is this two, three. Which is a totally fair deduction and is very helpful. But like as I was adding clues and mixing stuff around, I just did not think about it for a long time. Uh and until eventually it dawned on me that like, oh yes, of course this two three is that two three. Include. Well. Two. One of this one of these would be a seven. One. Oh, nearly. One one in this box is nearly uh, it's nearly on the Nabna. That's not actually very useful, is it? That would just rule two out of the Nabna. Um Is that that digit's the same, isn't it? That digit's the blue digit as well, I think. It's absolutely right. Because this right, digit doesn't yeah, appear that. in this triple, so it must appear there in row seven. So, and it also must appear here in box nine. So this digit is in one of those three cells in row nine. Golly gosh, okay. Okay, but again, these two digits, it's a bit like over here, except it's a different type of line. These two digits, we know that the whisper includes two low digits, and this, in, and this set of digits includes all the other low digits. So these digits on the Nabna are from 6, 7, 8, and 9. That one is not 7 or 9 by Sudoku. So that is 6 or 8. So that is not 7. Um, and now there is a 6 in one of these squares because they can't be an 8, 9 pair. Which means 6 in row 8 is in one of those two cells. It means we can't put five on this Nabna thingy anymore. So five is in one of those cells. Don't know if that's in any way useful. Oh, it is. Yeah, this is it's beautiful, actually. It's really... It's surprising and very clever again. Okay, so now we know those digits, I think. Because, look, these two digits, they can't interfere. That We've got two high digits here, and they're not five. So they're from one, two, three, and four, except there's a one already appeared. So they're now from two, three, and four, and they've got to be not consecutive. So they're two and four. Now that's not four. There is, t there is a two on this Ren band line. So there is a three on this Ren band line because it's either one, two, three, or it's two, three, four. And therefore, there we well, go. that's not three. That's a tiny deduction, but I think we can. And now our crosswalk starts to be useful. That. Or not. Um. Oh, come on, Simon. What does that mean? Uh, that means this whisper needs the other low digit. So this dig the digit on here. <clears throat> oh, that's it. That's it. I, I really okay. liked this so payoff for the end. Uh, the, the, uh, the way that this little length two whisper now 
and only now actually does anything at all is because we sort of got this uh, the two on here. And so this now basically is going to unravel everything. Uh, so I, I was really happy with this once I finally found it and finally figured out how to get this set up for this little innocuous looking whisper to sort of unravel everything and be mark the beginning of the end. Now, because this, this Ren ban has two and three on it, this whisper needs a low digit, which is one or four, and it's not four, so it's one. So there is a one on here, which is definitely doing things, isn't it? So one, six, seven, eight, nine are the options. This square is a six. Okay, that immediately takes six out of here. Um, so these squares have become a two, three, four, triple, which means that digit is a one, that digit is a four. We know there's a one in here. Let's actually make sure that we don't miss that. Yeah, that gets me the one in in box eight. I get an eight nine pair here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, look at these four squares now, as a as a unit. One of them is seven eight or nine, and the others the other of seven eight and nine are in these two squares. So there is a virtual seven eight nine triple in this column, which means that square is not eight. Funnily enough, I also thought of it as a virtual 789 triple, even though it is literally just a 1789 quadruple uh, that I, I realized later in one of my test solves that I, I had overcomplicated thinking so that about that. Square, oh, this does it, look. So this square is from 3 and 5 by Sudoku, and there's already a 3 on this line. So that's 5, that's 3. Uh, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So these are from six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, so now I've got a quadruple in row four from somewhere on six, seven, eights, and nines. Um, which means the rest of this row is from ones, twos, threes, and fours. So that's one, two, three, or four. These are one, two, three, and four. Oh, come on. That's We're so close, I think, to cracking it now. I think he might I've got need a very that this 2, 3 is there. It's just completely discombobulating. He, um, he might not have actually been able to get away with what that. What does this mean? I, I thought he was going to get escape. Actually, I'm going to pencil mark these digits. Maybe this That's will what do I'm it. going might. to do next. I have got 3, 5, 6, and 7 to place. Uh, all right, I've got a three in this column. So these are from these are from five, six, and seven. The six is have, having to be down here. So these are not sixes. These are from three, five, and seven. No, I've got a six in this row. Let's let's keep going with Sudoku. Oh, I see. Right. So the point is, this is six. I didn't see that, but that, that seems to be the point because I've got six on this line. Yeah, he, he did deduce that he needed the six without pencil marking it, which okay. does not help. Uh, I, I will agree, agree with Garion. Uh, but that's still S sadly unlike okay, me he doesn't have chat to remind good, him of things not, that he has said not earlier. Enough, I don't think. Ah, can I get... Oh, I nearly can. I really nearly can. Um, seven on this line looks interesting. Because... Oh, this has been available for a while, actually. I can see there is a seven um, on the whispers line. And if seven, if seven is here... This has to be a one two pair in that order. And if seven is here, it has to be a one two pair in that order. And if seven is here, it's less good. <laughs> that would be a one. And this would be a high digit, which would be eight or nine. 
bother. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to do that. So we may have to think again, I'm afraid. Um, how do we do that? Though? Yeah, unfortunately, this is something where, like, what should... he had a ripe opportunity to notice that this 2-3 was that 2-3 at the time he marked it. It's the it's an incredibly difficult thing to go back and see that after you've gone and done other things. I, I think it's going to be very difficult for him to go back and realize that he didn't notice that at the time. Because uh, it, it will, I'm sure, solve the puzzle for him if he does it. But it's the kind of thing that's difficult to go back to. What should we do next? We could three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't know where to look. I don't, it's going to be one of these silly lines, is it? Uh, probably. There's got to be one low and one high digit in this domino. Can we do something good with that? If this, well, okay, so then we're going to have three low digits. Depends what this digit is. If that wasn't five, then this would, this couldn't be low. It would have to be high. But, uh, if, oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Is it something to do with? I did admit this part took me days to oh, see. I don't so know at all. If that oh, hang on. If that's four, would that make things tricky? Well, only in the sense that if it was four, the four would have to go in one of those two positions. I do know. Who does definitely camouflage eight and nine the pencil marks? Here, that is a good I? point. So I know there's one high digit for sure in this domino, and two high digits there. Which is, oh, that's really close to being very powerful. How do we do this then? What's the, what's the trick? What's the trick, Zeta? What have you done? Um, is there, may, maybe there might be restrictions like this can't be four nine or something. Oh, that can't be four. Well, we should take everything we can get. Just, but that's just Sudoku. One is in one of these. I do think this one is tricky, so uh, Mavir. This was a, one, a thing this I notice be... is whenever a puzzle takes me a long time to set, which this one definitely did, it tends to end up being harder because my brain tends to more internalize the logic. Like, I probably did the break into this puzzle 40 times uh, in the process of setting it. Uh, and the... Uh, and so it tends to get then my brain gets very used to thinking about the things. And so then a few step a few steps creep into the puzzle that are harder uh, than otherwise would. Uh, I don't think anything in this is like too hard, at, le at least so far. I, I don't have any any shame about any of the steps, but definitely uh, some of the steps are harder than are in a lot of my puzzles. Be two, three. It would be two or three, wouldn't it? That would be quite good. Oh, there's got to be a low digit here. There's got to be a low digit here. But I was wondering if you would see that, Gary, and I, I don't know if it'll Again, do it anything for him. I can't but... quite see how to resolve all of the three, five, and seven stuff here. It feels, it does feel under pressure a bit, though. What about, hmm, don't know, <laughs> I'm stuck. Okay, let's try this row again. We did work out that there had to be, or maybe this was another place where we did this logic, but I can see here, 
Yeah, no, we did think about this because this, this is what enabled me to work out this square was not a six. But what I could have done when I saw that is I could have said, OK, well, there must be a six in this domino because otherwise it would be a seven, nine pair due to Navin logic. So that square is a seven, eight or a nine, therefore. Is that useful? Well, maybe actually it's not. So this has come down very slightly in, in terms of the panoply of things it can be. There is no seven on here anymore, I suppose. So this becomes six, eight, nine. I'm very curious now if he is going to going to see the uh so seven see the two three thing or if he's gonna find a, a, another way to now. This in one of these three positions. Now, if I could rule it out, or frankly, or in the German Whisper, you can see that the sevens are really going to operate together in a quite a cool way. If seven is here, it has to be a two seven pair. Now, is that broken? I don't know, actually. I'm unsure. I mean, it would be, I mean, would it be very powerful if this was two seven? Obviously it would give me this digit. Hmm, I don't know, it might, it might be very powerful. I can't quite see. Let's try. He's got the two three highlighted. Just oh, look at the other the two coloring. three. Maybe that digit's the same. Ah, uh, yep, there we go. It? These two digits are the same. That'll do it. Oh, that's it. Oh, it's that simple. Oh, I haven't been focusing on this at all, but that's great. That's absolutely great because this is going to do everything. Right. So this digit, I think it's right, isn't it? That's got to be there. So by Sudoku, it can't be here. There we go. So by Sudoku, it's here, and we know its nature is low. So that's two or three. It's a this really dirty one. trick, I will I will confess. Um, well, I said it's going to do... Well, it does something. It gets rid of one from there. So there's now one down here. So this group... Right, that's, that is interesting, because these squares now have to include a low digit that's not one. So there is a two, three, or a four floating about in this domino, and that pairs up with that and that to make a two, three, four triple, which means that square is five, which means that square is a seven, which means that square is a five. This is ridiculous. That square is a three. Ah, uh, this, well, okay, that, I was going to say that must be the same as that. That's not true. You could put three on the line. So you've got to be careful there. That's not seven anymore. That's going to give us the seven in this row. So that's seven. That's nine. Um, oh, I'm excited now. I think we might be able to finish. Come on. How do we do this? That square is A not five and B not three. So that's a two, four pair in this row. And we know there's this floating triple. So there's an eight or a nine in one of these. This square, yeah, where's the seven in this box? It's got to go in the corner. No song for you. This is eight or nine. That's, ah, that's good. That's not seven now. So we now know that this is the two seven pair in column eight. So that gives us a three, a three, a three, a three. Oh, so that was that was the digit. I don't think we could have got that before, but it did turn out to be true that that was the digit. Uh, that's a two. So that's this is a five naked single. So this is a two four pair naked single. I wonder if we could resolve it. And there's a two here. So this is two. This is four. <laughs> and now that's not two by the dint of this having a two on it. How long is it? I'm over an hour. I'm not. I'm not actually that surprised. This this has felt quite challenging. Um, six, eight, nine. This is eight or nine. It can't be six. And it sees nine. So that's eight. That's six in the corner. That's yeah, I, I do suppose with how much 
Sudoku that's there is and the, and the unraveling of this, that, that, that it is becomes eight. That's uh, eight. That's five. Uh, challenging so for Simon. D squares now. Um, that's a six. And that's a nine. Okay. So where is six in this box? It's got to go there. Which means that's six and there, that's There seven. has been a corner mark six in this column over in this box since time immemorial. We have pause uh, for breath. But it never These really did anything other than sort out the six and seven, seven but who cares about that? Which means I get the seven and the nine at the top of the grid. I get the nine and the eight at the bottom of the grid. How do I do this two-fourth? How do I do these two four shenanigans at the bottom? Not sure. These ah, that's not three by Sudoku. These are Oh, I said, <laughs> look at this. Right. These are one, four, and five. Well, we can't put four and five on a nabna. So this tiny little domino nabna here is telling us there's a one on it, which means that square must be a four, which means actually it's a one, five pair. Four comes out of here. Four comes out of here. Um don't know what that means if one five here gives us the eight at the top so that becomes a six eight nine pair here um two four pair here okay That's probably important, but I can't see how to resolve Thank it. Thank you, David. So I'm glad you enjoy them. I do enjoy them. Elsewhere. Uh, I, I enjoy watching these with all of you. It's a lot of fun. This must be done somehow. So, oh, that's not eight anymore. Do I know? I know one of these is a five, don't I? But. Oh, golly, I don't know. I'm stuck. Um, oh, no, I'm not. By Sudoku, that is an eight. Okay, well, that's huge. So that's a five. So eight is removed from these squares and shifts over to the left side, which means nine, because this there's an eight in one of these, nine must be in one of these, and that gives us this digit. So that's seven. These two squares are a two nine pair, which gives us this digit's nine, this digit's seven. The blue three is invisible. And we've still got ones, twos, threes, and fours to put in. How is this, this must be done? I just can't <laughs> see why. Um, okay, here is that right? What I'm about to say. it is right, I think. Yeah. Okay, this digit cannot be four, I'm going to claim. And that, the reason I think that's right is, is because I've got nine on the right-hand side of the whisper. This is a really nice point again. If, if this was four, I've got to put four somewhere here. But four this needs is how to I shelter this itself on a whisper by being next to a nine. I think people in chat saw the here smarter way. Here, where would the four go? It would have to go into column one, wouldn't it? And that would require a second nine. So I think this is not four, uh, which actually, given that I've got a three here, means that's two and that's four. That's four and that's two. So now it's a two that lives in one of these squares. And this two is, that's doing some things. Look, two, seven, seven, one, one, five. That's four. This is done now. That's two. That's three. So this is a one three pair. That is a four. That that's a four. And that's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight. Losing its vision. Ah, oh, there we go. Finally, I think we've we've resolved this whisper. It's the last thing, because that seems to put a one here, which means that must be the two. That must be the eight. I really that am amazed at how, how long it takes to resolve this corner. whisper. It resolves the top there. Good grief. That is very, very... That is fas what a fascinating puzzle. Better double-click all the threes, double-click all the twos, just so we've got a complete picture. Click tick. Yes. Oh. Okay. So it's, doesn't it doesn't know that was the solution. I, 
I think the version I sent the software. Had a okay, so I will have to, I'll have to go away and check um, that this looks right. But if it is right, um, hopefully there will be a uh, solution embedded in the software by the time this video goes live later. And it had a solution. Okay, so I posted one with the solution, and then CTC posted one with the solution. Okay, that's fine. That was very, very, very good. Again. Um, yeah, it's it's really really beautiful how you can make these digits dance with that. This part was very clever. Just the simple interaction with the the Nabna line, and not being able to have more than one overlap. It took me about fifteen minutes to find that, and then thank and then you, you, Sarah. Can, you could do all sorts you, of things from there we, we could we deduce some things about this line and eventually oh yeah and then we, eventually we could work out the parity we could work out loads of stuff about this region some line and all of this stuff on the my, my favorite dorlier asked what my favorite deduction is my favorite deduction in this puzzle is definitely uh the uh fact that Owing to this cell, this nap and this Nabner, these two Renbon have to share exactly one digit. That 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 is my uh the thing I sort of built this around was that that idea. Right. I don't claim to understand even now. <laughs> but it did seem to all resolve itself logically once I managed to connect the dots correctly. So I I, I took the crosswalk. I probably made it to the other side without being um polaxed by a lot of uh, large vehicles coming in my direction uh, and I really enjoyed the puzzle let me know in the comments how you got on I enjoy the comments especially when they're kind and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic well thank you everyone uh, for joining me uh, for this I am going to go uh, recuperate some more uh, and have a bunch more liquid because I, I have been like slamming like gallons of liquid a day as I have been getting over this and I'm going to continue to do this. Uh, but uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, and if you don't know, I do stream regularly. So I'll be streaming again on Friday, fingers crossed. So if you... Uh, if you would like to hang out, and my husband Tristan will be streaming tomorrow, I believe. So I sound healthier now than at the start of the stream. Uh, thank you. Well, that, that's good. Yeah, the... Uh, but yeah, I will. Uh, so anyway, so please subscribe and like and all those sorts of things. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, and I'll see you all real soon. So bye for now.